I'm Kimberly Jolly from It's So Emma, and we have brand new foundation paper that you're going to love. We have four sizes of flying geese. We have one by two finished, one and a half by three, two by four, and three by six. And in each pad of paper, there are 42 pads of paper, and each paper makes two flying geese. So you can make a total of 84 flying geese. The best part about it is your units are gonna come out perfect, and so when you sew them into your block, your quarter inch is gonna be perfect and right on the line, and it's gonna make your blocks come together much nicer. And I'm gonna show you how to put those together. What you need is just a foundation pad, a rotary cutter, I like to use a glue stick, an add a quarter ruler, and the quick press seam roller so that you don't have to iron. So let me show you how to use it. When you open your flying geese pad of paper, right here you're gonna have some fun block ideas. And on the other side, it's gonna tell you exactly what to cut. So for placement one, we need a five by five and three quarter inch rectangle, which we've already cut. And that fabric will be this part of the flying geese. Then you're gonna cut two three and a half inch squares and cut that on the diagonal to create four triangles. And today we're making the two by four inch finished. And again, we're gonna make two flying geese out of this. So to make your flying geese, you're just gonna take one paper out. And we have specially designed this paper to be nice and thin so that you can pull the paper off. What I like to do before I start is crease the triangles on the outside. Just go ahead and crease these. It will make it easier as you go to have these four creased. And the fun thing is you are making two flying geese at once. And on the wrong side of the paper, what I'm gonna do is put glue on three of the units, and you're gonna see why next. I'm gonna place this down on the wrong side, right side up. So this fabric is right side up, and I just wanna make sure that I'm within my lines that are solid lines, which are right here, and I am. And then the two sides that I did not put glue on here and here. I'm going to fold these back on that crease I already created. Trim a quarter inch away. So you're going to just rotate that. And this ruler has a little bump. So when you put it up, it just stops where you need to cut. I'm going to flip this over. And because these are far enough apart, I can do two at a time. I'm gonna add a little bit of glue here. Put the triangles, two of the triangles, right side down. This is so line fabric glue, so it is safe for fabric. And just try to center your triangles. We're gonna turn this over. That will stay in place. We're gonna stitch from a quarter inch away from the seam all the way across to a quarter inch past. The same thing here, start a quarter inch away, go all the way across to a quarter inch past. We're gonna use a size 90 needle and we're gonna use a lower stitch length than you normally use. So I'm gonna use a 1.5 since I usually use a 2.0 and we're gonna stitch directly on those lines. So now I'm going to just press these and I'm gonna use the quick press seam roller. If you use an iron, just don't use steam and that should lay nice and flat. You're gonna turn that over and you're gonna pull this back to the crease you already made and you do have to pull a little bit from your stitches that's why it's great to stitch a quarter inch past so that your stitches do not come undone. Trim a quarter inch away. Do the same thing on the other side. So just pull your stitches back a little bit. 
and when your stitches don't come out, you know you're at the right stitch length. If, you're, if your stitches are coming out, you want to shorten your stitch length a little bit. Go to the other side, add some glue, or you could pin, either way. Place this down, just try to be in the center a little bit, and we will do the same thing on the other side. Turn over and stitch down these, starting a quarter inch before and after. Now that we have these sewn, we're going to press this with our seam roller. And when we cut this down, you're gonna end up with two flying geese. So you're gonna turn this over, you're gonna ignore all of your dotted lines, and you're gonna cut on your solid lines. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is cut around all four sides. That's the easiest thing to start with. and just cut exactly on the lines. And now that you have that done, you have two solid lines here, and it says trim on this line and trim on this line. So I'm gonna trim there. That's gonna give you one flying geese. This is gonna give you a second flying geese. And what's great about these flying geese is, if you look, your quarter inch is exactly from that top. To remove the paper, you just gently remove the two outside pieces, and this inside will just come right off. And if you have used a size 90 needle and a short enough stitch length, everything is gonna come off and your stitches are not going to come undone. Super, super easy. And you're gonna use the same method on all of the papers. You just have different cut sizes, which are on the inside lid of the paper. So in each of your pads, you're gonna have ideas for quilt blocks. I'm gonna show you how easy and fun these are and how they look. And these are just ideas, but it will make lots of fun blocks and they're gonna come out nice and accurate. So that is our first block idea. Now this one looks a little bit intricate, but it will come out just as easy as your other one does. Now this one is really, really easy. So this would be the easiest one if you're a beginner. So those are just four options with your flying geese. Of course, there's so much you can do with these units. We hope you love the newest addition to our foundation paper pads. You can buy these as a set at Fat Quarter Shop, and we hope to see you soon.